Hello, YouTube. It's your boy, Deformed Pig, back at it with another review. It's actually not been that long since I last uploaded. It's only been, I think, a little less than a month, actually. I believe the uh, 20, April 25th was the last video I uploaded. And uh, today I'm bringing you another series of reviews similar to my Sabaton and Trivium ones, which I will hopefully get through, unlike my Blind Guardian ones. And it is Ailstorm album review. This might be interesting because Ailstorm is just a really stupid pirate metal band that I really enjoy. And I honestly, the only reason I can really justify doing this is that I just want to kind of try and make this a monthly thing. It's really hard to consistently upload, especially <clears throat> the rant I, I um, went through at the end of my uh, Ranking Trivium albums video about, you know, not the hard work paying, not really paying off. I feel that, and I feel like it will be, like, not fun to continuously do that. So I'm going to try and break it up into just monthly things, really, to just do these. I already um, have in mind what I'm going to do for the next series after I finish the Storm ones, because this will be a short series, because they don't have that many albums. Obviously, I'm starting today. Well, I'm, I'm recording this on Sunday. It's going to go up really early Monday, but it's, it's I'll be done by Friday, obviously, with the review of their new album, Curse of the Crystal Coconut. Ooh, coconut. And obviously, just like Trivium and Sabaton, I'm going to be bringing you my review of all of their discography in order, starting with their first album that they released, Captain Morgan's Revenge, back in 2008. I was actually alive when this was released, and it's young, very young. So let's not waste any more time. I, I'll probably get more into that at the end of this video with my overall thoughts for Aerostorm's first album, Captain Morgan's Revenge. So it's a fine enough album. It's much different than their current stuff. Reviewing Aerostorm is weird because they're not like Trivium or Sabaton where, you know, you can just review it like you would normal music because Aerostorm is, I, I kind of consider them a comedy band really, so I can't judge them based on that. And I'm not, I'm judging them based off, did I enjoy listening to their music? Do I enjoy this album or do I, in the track by track, which is what I do here, do I enjoy this particular song and does it really add to the album? This is really how I'm gonna be reviewing them. It, it, it's it's kind of hard to do. It's much harder to review than Sabaton or Trivium. And the reason I'm wearing the Sabaton shirt, normally I always wear this shirt of the band I'm reviewing, but I don't have an Ailstorm shirt. And really the only justification I have for this is when I went and saw Sabaton live, a lot of people were wearing Ailstorm shirts. So that's really my only justification. But back into my overall thoughts, it, it's much different than their current stuff. It's a lot less folk-based and a lot less comical. There's obviously still, you know, it's, it's lighthearted because, you know, they're not taking this seriously. But it's not as like comical not to say, you know, like Fucked With An Anchor or um, Treasure Chest Party Quest. You know, those songs being pretty, you know, just stupid comical pirate metal. Here it's a little more serious and there's a lot less folk instrumentation and a lot more traditional heavy metal sounds. Not to say there's no um, folk elements at all because there's still is but there's a lot less my biggest issue is here they just clearly didn't have their sound figured out this album is so much different than their current stuff because it's a lot less folk based and it, it kind of shows here they've come a long way since this album and it does really show this album tends to drag and be really boring at parts especially towards the early parts of this album and Christopher Bowes' vocals here, he's a great vocalist for Ailstorm and an even greater keyboardist for a band I actually like a lot better than Ailstorm, Glory Hammer. I love Glory Hammer. I, I hope one day I'll get to talk about them on this channel whenever they do a new album, I'll probably review their three albums. Um, they're a lot more raspy and low-pitched, his vocals, and it doesn't always fit. It's kind of like um, Metalizer for Sabaton, you know, how that's kind of the black sheep in their discography. This isn't as much because their, challenge, their, their sound hasn't changed drastically. It's not as safe from, like, Return in Blood Red to Lupus Day, like Power Wolf, that's a band I would compare between the two. Really, it's not that much of, like, a different sound, but it's still pretty different and a lot more metal-based. It shows it, it, his vocals don't always work. There's low-pitched, raspy voice. It's not like in Metalizer where Yoki made it work. Here, it doesn't really work, especially on the song Nancy the Tavern Wench, which I'll get more into in my track by track. However, they did fix it on the next album, his vocals, so thankfully it's not a uh, lingering complaint. It's a solid introduction to Ailstorm, but why would you listen to this album when you could listen to No Grave But the Sea or Sunset on the Golden Age or even the three singles they released from the new album that's coming out? It's not a bad album at all, and the last half is a lot better, but quite simply, all, almost all, if not all, of the Ailstorm albums are better than this one. I haven't listened to Ailstorm's discography in a really long time, with the exception of No Grave But the Sea, because I have that album on vinyl, I listen to it a lot. So a lot of this isn't, it's not first impressions at all, like my What the Dead Men Say or the Great Roar review. It's more just looking at it from a fresh perspective. That's a hard word to say, and it's really late at night. But I guess just... I haven't listened to their discography in two years, pretty much, almost exactly. The last time I listened to Alstorm's discography was the end of one of my high school years, and this is closing in another one of my high school years. 
So it's, it's, it's pretty much just looking at it two years later, do I view their discography any different? Looking at it purely as it is, it's a solid album, but if you're looking at it in terms of Alestorm's albums and their discography, yeah. So let's get into the track by track, because we're five minutes in. So track number one, Over the Seas, which is a very solid opener to the album that establishes exactly what Alestorm is and wastes no time just getting straight into the album, and I like that. The vocals are a little too deep and not quite loud enough. That's another issue I have. The, the vocals aren't always that loud on this album, and it's hard to hear. That's the only issue I really have with here, which is a lingering complaint throughout the whole album. It's a great song that immediately establishes what Ailstorm is, and it's a song I think anyone can listen to and enjoy, especially the chorus is a fun one. So on to track number two, Captain Morgan's Revenge, which is a pretty good track. I love the story it tells about pirates killing their captain and then being cursed with never being able to feel happy and eventually dying. And I especially love the chorus. It reminds me a lot of a power metal song, and I don't know if people would consider Ailstorm power metal. They're really categorized into pirate metal, folk metal, and power metal. Those three genres, I they're not really traditional power metal. They're, they've always just felt like more... Because a lot of people also consider Children of Bubblegum power metal. So if you're considering them, then yes, I would say they are kind of a power metal band, but not in the sense like Sabaton, Blind Guardian, Falconer, or Sonata Arctica, Power Wolf, Glory Hammer, bands like those. They're, they're, they're kind of different if you're considering the power metal. But it does kind of drag on a little too long. The bridge section especially is, is, is kind of boring, and I feel like this track should have been safe for later in the album because the last three tracks on this album, the last few tracks, are super short. And it's just kind of like, it feels like a bit of a slog to get there, and they were just like, whoa, we're done already? It's, it's kind of like that. It, the pacing on this album isn't really the best. I'm spinning in my chair a lot. I feel like it should have been safe for later because of its length, because it's the longest song on the album. But it's still a pretty good song albeit a kind of boring one especially that midsection but the chorus to it it's still a good song that i would recommend you check out but it is kind of boring so on to track number three the huntsmaster which is yeah it's fine i guess the chorus is good but the rest of the song is just eh. the first guitar solo especially is surprisingly bad not because of the technicality of it, it's just it sounds out of key and the track sounds misaligned the same thing i said with my vengeance falls review for trivium it, it, it just it, it feels out of key and like it's almost in a different tuning kind of like um making comparisons here because that's what i do drawing comparisons to the album northwind by falconer one of my or actually my favorite band falconer their um their, their album northwind every almost every song their solos changed keys which made no sense and here it feels like he changed keys in the guitar player but no one else did in the band and it just doesn't really fit i don't really like this song except the ending part and chorus are pretty good but none of the rest of this song is that great so under track number four nancy the tavern witch which is going to be kind of controversial here because i do not like this song Sounds like it's trying to be a ballad, but Christopher Bowe's vocals, as I said, he's a great vocalist for Alstorm, but here he does not do it. It doesn't sell it for me. His vocals just sound way too raspy and low. It's more boring than anything else. It's kind of considered a classic Alstorm song, but like, why? From this album, Death Before the Mast, Over the Sea, is even the title track in Set Sail and Conquer of Treasure, Wenches and Eat are just much better songs. There's Almost every song on this album is better than this song, and I don't get why this is considered the classic. It's just such a bore to get through, really, and that's my biggest issue with it, is that it's boring. But thankfully, the, la the boredom of the last two songs, and kind of this is the title track, is cured immediately with the next song, number five, Death Before the Mass, which is easily my favorite track on this album. I love the bass intro, especially, as I said, obviously being a bass player myself with my Ibanez six-string bass. By the way, if you follow me on uh, Instagram, on uh, my Zach Martin music channel, I will be posting a cover for that song um, sometime this week or maybe the day the album releases in celebration of that. I did the same thing with Trivium when I covered Built to Fall on Bass, so if you're here and don't follow my Instagram, follow it at Zach Martin Music. That's my full name, but it's given away anyways. Uh, no spaces, no caps, just Zach Martin Music. Give that a follow. All, all three people that are going to watch this video. But it, it, it's easily my favorite track here. The bass intro is amazing. It's just such a great song. I love the energy of the track and just everything about it. It's not boring at all, which is something the rest of the album, a lot of the other songs in this album, can't really say. It's always been one of my favorite Alestorm tracks. It's one of the first I actually ever heard of them. It's, I believe, the first I ever heard from this album. And so I just absolutely love this song. Just purely for that bass intro, it's, it's just so good. And I just recommend this song to anyone, Alestorm fan or not. Let's turn to track number six. Terror of the High Seas, which is, at least it's not super boring. It's still not a great song, but I like the speed of it. Bo's vocals here obviously just kill it for me. He's a great vocalist and they fix in later albums, but I can't excuse it here. It feels like the song was rushed and put in the album last minute. This album does kind of have a feeling that it was rushed and they were confused in the making on this album, which confused in the making I can understand, but rushed, I mean, if this is your first album, it shouldn't really feel 
rushed but i mean i guess if you know label fresh or whatever it, it it just feels rushed and like they needed one more song after they added the cover and the last track on the song is a cover it, it just feels like this was added in super last second there's not much i can say so on to track number seven set sail and conquer and i absolutely love the opening riff of this song i listened to this song a lot purely for that intro the rest of the song is still good and definitely one of the better songs of this album the keyboard solos uh especially is the best on this album in my opinion because there's a lot of keyboard solos in the the, the, the kind of one thing i didn't say the, what's the word i'm looking for just i guess the intonation or the sound of the of the keyboards just really bothers me it's really piercing i guess is the best way to describe it but here it's a, it's a pretty good solo it normally just takes the place of a guitar solo but here it does a pretty good job and it is something i enjoy the song is very good but damn that intro is a bop sound to track number eight of treasure now this i like it feels a lot more like a traditional folk metal song it is a really good part the song the best part really is just how folky this song feels that's that's a word folky uh, it's it's a really short song i believe it might be the shortest original song on some because i think the final track it which is a cover might be a little shorter than this one there's not much i can say other than it's it's a great solid song that i feel like anyone can just listen to and enjoy so on track number nine wenches in mead which is another pretty good song it's not boring and the vocals are fine it's another kind of classic alstrom song not really anything to dislike here it's a short not, not as short as the uh, next track or the track before it. it it is a short track kind of but it's not super short it's shorter than the rest of the album but not really as i said in uh earlier my overall thoughts the last part of this album just feels like whoa it's super short and closing which i mean it's it's fine it, it does it prevents it from really dragging like the earlier part of this album and i do really like this song let's start with track number 10 flower of scotland which is a cover i've never heard either of the I've never, I shouldn't say I've never heard either. Why did I say that? I haven't heard the original, so I can't say which one is better. But this song is just not not that good, honestly. It's it's boring, and I think they should have put something original here to close the album rather than this. It's, it just feels out of place. It doesn't feel like, I mean, I know the band is from Scotland, obviously, but it doesn't really feel like a, a, a closing, a good closing track to this pirate-themed album. I wish they had put something original here, or even just an instrumental would have been better than this. It's, it's not very good. So to my closing thoughts. So, although it's admittedly rather boring, Captain Morgan's Revenge is a pretty solid introduction album for Ailstorm, albeit one that's overshadowed by almost all, if not all, of the albums in their discography. That's the first time I got their closing thoughts right. Let's go. I always stutter and mess it up. My final score for Captain Morgan's Revenge is probably going to be a little weird because I always go decimals. 7 out of 10. Normally I always go with decimals, but here I don't think there's a need for decimals. It's just, I think, a flat out 7 out of 10. It, it, it's all right, but it's just overshadowed by everything it's probably going to be overshadowed by curse of the crystal coconut based just based purely on the uh, first three singles they released is is better than almost anything on them with the exception of uh death before the mask but overall that's my thoughts on captain morgan's revenge so anyways tomorrow i will bring you my review of their second album well i guess it's technically today since it's midnight here but um of their second album black sales at midnight and we'll obviously continue that until Friday. Well, I will after I do my Alstrom albums rank, I'll get into the next albums I'm going to talk about, which will be coming out in June, late in June. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, which I know you didn't, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see all you people in the next video.